In this video, we're going to use the Create Tower Clones dialog to create some cool spiral effects. Let's begin by activating the Circles and Ellipses tool, then dragging in the canvas to start creating an object. Let's hold Ctrl to make it a perfect circle. We want to make it pretty small as it's going to get larger and larger as the spiral grows. Also, if the stroke of your object says Unset down on the status bar like mine does, we need to shift click the X here so that it says None instead. Next, we want to open the Create Tower Clones dialog by going to Edit, Clone, Create Tower Clones. The Create Tower Clones dialog lets us tile clones of objects in a ton of different ways, and all the tabs here work together. Down at the bottom, we can choose whether we want to tile the clones into rows and columns, or to fill in a specified area. Let's choose Rows, Columns. Mine is currently set to 4 rows and 5 columns, so if I click this Create button, I get 4 rows and 5 columns of clones and we can click Remove here to get rid of them. Let's now check out the Rotation tab, which lets us rotate the clones. We're going to use this to tile the clones in a circle. First, we need to decide how many clones we want to create. I'll go with 10. We then need to type that number into either rows or columns. It really doesn't matter which one we choose, so I'll just go with rows. We also need to change the other value to 1. Next, to get the correct angle we need for tiling our clones in a circle, we divide 360 by the number of clones we're creating, and use that number as the angle either for per row or per column, depending on what we chose down here. So for per row, I would change it to 360 divided by 10 equals 36. Next, we need to switch to the Select tool, and click the object again so that we can see the rotation center here. And let's move it to a location that will become the center of the circle that our clones will tile around. Okay, if we click Create right now, it won't work correctly yet. And that's because as use saved size, the position of the tile box here is checked. When this is checked, Inkscape will disregard any change we've made to the size and position of the object after we've created clones of it. This includes the position of the object's rotation center. So let's uncheck this and click Create. We still have a slight problem though. When we create tiled clones, the clones are automatically shifted, which is why they weren't placed directly on top of each other when we tiled them to rows and columns earlier. That's also why they're a bit all over the place right now. To fix this, we need to switch to the Shift tab here, which lets us set how much the clone should be shifted. To turn off shifting completely, which is what we want to do, we have these Exclude Tile boxes here. Because we're working with rows, we can just check the Exclude Tile option for rows. When we click Create now, the clones are arranged in a perfect circle centered at the location of the rotation center. And we can change the rotation center's location if we want. Let's now switch over to the Color tab and see how we can change the colors of our clones. First, if you've ever worked with clones in Inkscape before, you might know that clones always take the color information of the original object. This means that we can't change the colors of clones unless we unset the original object's colors first. To do this, we need to use the Fill and Stroke dialog, which we can get to by clicking this button in the commands bar. Now, under the Fill tab and the Stroke Paint tab, we have this question mark button, which we use to unset an object's fill and stroke colors. We're only working with the fill color at the moment, so we can go to the fill tab and just unset our object's fill color. The objects appear to be black now, but if we look down here in the status bar, we can see that the fill color is actually unset. We're now free to change the colors of the clones. So back in the color tab, we have this initial color option, which we can click and choose a color that the clones will start from. I'll set it to red. Next, we can set what percentage we want each clone's color to change by in hue, saturation, and lightness per row and per column. Hue basically refers to all of the colors in the rainbow. And because we're creating 10 rows of clones, if we set the hue per row value to 10%, we will get all of the possible hues. Alright, let's give this a try. We now have a circular rainbow. Now we're going to learn how we can arrange our clones in a spiral. For this, we need to include the Scale tab which allows us to change the size of our clones by certain percentages. First, we need to decide how much we want to scale each row of clones. For now, I'll go with 20% for X and Y. And to create a spiral, we need to set the base values here. If we set these to something less than 1, like 0.5, the clones will converge toward the rotation center. If we set them to something larger than 1, like 2, they will diverge. These two values don't have to be the same, but if they aren't, they will cause the clones to become warped. Like this. I'll set them both back to 2. 
But working with spirals really becomes interesting is when we add more clones and start playing around with the rotation angle. I'm going to change the number of clones to 100. And we'll want to make the scaling smaller. I'll go to 3. Now if we switch to the rotation tab and change the angle to something small like 5, we can get a spiral like this. And because we're using 100 clones now, we can switch to the color tab and change the hue percentage to 1 to make the spiral span the whole color spectrum. Now we can go back to the rotation tab and try out some different angles. And we can also, of course, change the location of the rotation center. Okay, so that's how we can create spirals with the Create Tower Clones dialog. I encourage you to play around with all these settings like angles, colors, and scaling and see what kind of spirals you can come up with. You can try this with different shapes as well. Alright, I will see you in the next lesson.